Hi, this is Scott Marshman with Ecabinet's Tips and Tricks. This is a follow-up video on a video that I've done on how to create a two-piece Lazy Susan cabinet. That was not all that dynamic. As a matter of fact, it wasn't dynamic at all because when you resize the cabinet, you have to redraw your display panels. So in this video, i got a different method. I'm in the cabinet editor here, and I'm going to use a standard base frameless cabinet. I'm using all in there three quarter inch material. I'm going to try to make it as dynamic as possible. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make this cabinet width 36 inches. So I've got a 36 by 24 by 34 and a half inch high cabinet. Now the next thing I need to do is put my clip on the deck in the top. So I'm going to do the top. I'm going to go into part editor here and we'll go into contour mode and I'm going to create edges. Now I'm going to set my offset. I'm going to use an 8 inch clip here. So I've got 8 inches and I'm going to copy those lines. I'm going to copy this one up and this one to the left. And I'm going to use my trim tool and I'm going to trim one edge. I'm going to trim this line to that one and this one to that one. Now I can get rid of the lines I don't need by delete inside the intercept window and delete those two lines. Now, I've got angle snap on and object snap on. I've got my angle snap set to 45 degrees. And I'm going to make sure that my pick box is encompassing those lines and connect those lines. Now I can just exit the contour mode and create part using close contour. Click on my geometry and next. And return the name. Now I'm going to do the deck, but first I want to show you how to put constraints on here. Because you're going to need to constrain these. If you do not constrain them, you're going to have issues. So I'm doing horizontal constraints. And I'm going to click there and there. And that is 8 inches. And I want that to always be 8 inches. If you want to change it later on down the road, just come in here and edit these dimensions to whatever you need. So now I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and do the deck. Okay, so I've got my clips on my deck on my top here. The next thing I want to do is apply some edge banding to the top of the deck and the left end here. So go to my edge banding and select the edge banding that I want to use. And at the top front edge, and I'm going to use a 32nd inch generic edge banding here. So I've got my front edge on my top, my front edge on my uh, deck, and my front edge on my right end. Now what I need to do is apply an inset to this left end and the back. So I'm going to go into construction settings and on my left end I'm going to use my formula. So I want to go to the back, my formula editor here, and I want to have my back thickness, okay, plus 8 inches minus 5 sixteenths. And OK. So if I go OK, that should put it where it needs to be. And that looks pretty good. So when I do a 22 and a half degree miter, that should work. Now if you haven't viewed my video on creating dynamic octagon columns, be sure you can check them all out because I get into a lot of detail on how to do exactly what we're doing right here. I'm going to do the back next. So I'm going to go to settings. Construction settings and go to my back and I want the left inset. And this time I'm just going to go 8 plus or minus 0.3125 by 16 and OK. And that should be 711 16 And that looks pretty good. That should be a good miter out there. Now what I need to do is adjust this front inset on the left end. What I want it to do is extend out half the depth of this cabinet and then allow for the right end that this is going to butt into. So this is basically acting as the back of a corner cabinet. So I'm going to settings, construction settings here, and under my left end, I'm going to use my formula editor and I'm going to go to the front and I need a negative inset. And I'm going to use the cabinet depth divided by 2 minus my right end 
thickness. Now I'm using my right hand thickness because more than likely the cabinet is going to be going up against this one. It's going to have the same thickness ends. If that's not the case, then you need to adjust this. And click OK, and it should be 11 and a quarter. And so we've got that. We've got our edge banding. The next thing we need to do is put our center back in here. So I'm going to go into the stretcher editor, and I'm going to put a helper stretcher in here. So I'm going to click on this one first, and then this one. And I'm going to create a stretcher. So I'm going to add a stretcher. And I want it to be about one inch wide. It doesn't really matter how wide it is, but I want it to be a front back orientation and I want to use a one of the material that I've got set up that is one thirty second inch thick. I've used this for my helper stretchers. So I'm gonna click on you and adjust it. Now I'm gonna go to advance and I want um, inset two to be on my right end and the bottom of my right end. And then inset 4, I'm just going to put it be on my back, in the front of my back. And I'm going to go ahead and set it in to 0 and lock on. And uh, now what I can do is create my up down stretcher. And no matter how high I make this cabinet, it's always going to follow this stretcher and the top of my cabinet. Now, if you plan on maybe deleting this top for whatever reason, you can go ahead and put another helper stretcher in there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click on my top and then my helper stretcher here. And I'm going to add a stretcher. Um, I'm going to leave it at two inches. Left right orientation. And I'm going to use my two quarter generic material. Now I need to adjust that stretcher. So I'm going to go to adjust stretcher. Now the first thing I want to do is go ahead and rotate that thing. I'm going to click on uncheck lock. And I'm going to type in 135 degrees. And here, and it rotated it, and I'm going to relock it. And now I can go and set my insets. Now, like I said, if you haven't viewed my video on how to create a dynamic octagon column in part three, I'll cover this in a lot of detail. So, the top, I need to be on the top. And I in set 2, I need it to be on the bottom. Now, in set 3, I need it to be on my left end and the back of my left end. And then in set 4, I need it to be on the back and the back of the back. Now, in set 5, it needs to be on the left end also and the left side of the left end. And we'll click OK. Now I'm going to set inset 1 at 0 and lock it. And inset 2 at 0 and lock it. Now inset 3 needs to be a negative 17 30 seconds. Now this depends on the thickness material you're using. So whatever thickness material you're using, make sure you go by that. And I'll cover all this in those videos that I was telling you about. Um, now the next thing will be in set 4, and it needs to be at 0, and lock it. And in set 5, needs to be at 0, and lock it. So, that should put it right where we need it. And that looks good. So let's go done, and put that in the name. Oh, that looks good. Now, let's fix this. Now, if, you, if you're okay with the way this is, you can leave it just like it is. And um, that's entirely up to you. But I'm going to adjust that. I'm also going to adjust the back inset. So, you know, construction settings. And then on my left end, on my bottom, I'm going to use my formula editor. And I'm just going to go to toe kick height. If I change my toe kick height, this is automatically going to adjust. I'm going to go ahead and go to my back and do the same thing. Bottom inset. Toe kick height and OK. Now, everything should be good to go. The only thing I need to do is make this a phantom part. I'll click on it, go to phantom parts, and select yes. So now that's a phantom part, it won't be seen in custom layout and it won't show up on the cut list. Now everything looks pretty good. 
So what I would do now is go ahead and save it. Now the next cabinet we need to work with is one that's going to go on the left side. So I'm going to bring up another standard frameless cabinet. This time we want this one to be 12 inches wide and 24 inches deep. Now this end needs to be basically removed, but I'm not going to remove it altogether because we're going to use it and as well as the back here. We go ahead and set it as a phantom part. That way we don't have to mess with the insets for our deck. If I change my back thickness, they're going to automatically adjust. Now for the left end here. Um, this cabinet actually, even though I want to, want to be able to type in 12 inches, this top and this deck needs to extend out past the end 1 32nd of an inch. Okay? But what I want to do is I want to make my end a phantom part, but I'm going to use a different material. So on my right end here, I'm going to select my dummy stretcher material. Now you can see how that worked, and it's also got the cut out right here. Um, what I want to do is make some adjustments to that, because I don't necessarily want it to go all the way to the top. So let's go back into construction settings. Um, my right end here, I want my top inset to be underneath my top. Okay. Click OK. Now, my bottom inset, I want it to be underneath my deck. So, what I need to do is go up by my toe kit type plus my deck thickness. I'm going to click OK and OK. Let's see if that works. And that seemed to work good. Now, what I need to do is make some adjustments on my deck and my top. What I want to happen is I want this deck to go out the thickness of my end plus another 30 second, which is going to allow for the edge banding on that right section there. Now I've got my end set to be the thickness of my edge banding, okay? So if you're using a different thickness edge banding, you can just create your own material for whatever thickness the edge banding is that you're using. So what I'm going to do is go into construction settings. I'm going to work with my deck first, and I'm going to go to my right end set, and I want it to be negative my right end thickness plus my right end thickness and okay so it should be minus 1 /16. let's go to the top and do the same thing so right end set negative my right end thickness plus my right end thickness and okay and and adjust it just like I want. Let's check this one out. And that one did fine too. Now, for the toe kick, this toe kick needs to extend out the distance of the toe kick that it's going into. And right now I'm using a 5 inch toe kick. So let's go into the construction settings again. And then on the toe kick, on the right side here, it needs to be 5 and one thirty second. So we got all that. Now I just need to go ahead and set this end here to phantom part. I just need to apply my edge banding. Okay, so I've got my edge banding on here. The only thing I need to do now is save that cabinet. And then custom layout. I've already got one cabinet in here. I'm going to put the one I just created in this corner. Just to show you how you can, you don't matter which side you're on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this cabinet here. And I'm going to put it on this wall. This is the right side, so I'm going to put it on the right side. So the only thing I need to do now is put this one in here. So I'm going to put it right here. Now, if you come over here and touch this cabinet, it's going to want to snap to that side there. So I'm just going to put it on this wall. And I'm going to click on my wall and go to my elevation. And I'm going to click on this. So right now we're at 32 and 7 eighths. What this is doing is it's measuring from the side of this toe kick right here to the right side of this wall. So we need to adjust that so that it butts up 
to this toe cube. Now this cabinet is 24 inches and this cabinet is actually 12 inches but we got it extended out by 132nd if you remember. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell this to be 19 inches. So you can see how that moved over. Let's go back into overhead view and if I click on you and click on you we got 36 and 36. Now one of the things I didn't show you was uh, how to get the doors on these cabinets. And I'll do that in another video. So be sure you stay tuned for that video. And hey, if this one helped you out, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get all my tips and tricks. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.